everyone. I'm Nala. And I'm Faith. And this is The Siren's Den, your fandom podcast where we talk all things pop culture under the sun. Today on our show, we have the ever uh, wonderful, good friend, uh, professional shit poster, Manuel! And filmmaker. Oh, and filmmaker. <laughs> Not all he does. <laughs> Uh, it's mostly what I do. Uh, that's not even a joke, and I'm a little sad about it, but hey, it happened. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you here to talk about some Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. Ooh. I'm wow. Excited. That that was definitely um, a movie to to just get me excited about movies again. Mm-hmm. It really. Was it was a movie. one of the movies that came out this year for <laughs> it, sure. It, it uh-huh. was. A film. <laughs> it was cinema, actually. It was <laughs> ten out of ten. Uh, Scorsese eyebrows approved. Yes, Scorsese bows down to Godzilla. Yeah, and Kong. I mean, I feel like this movie had what we're all in Godzilla movies for, and that's a big monster fight. <laughs> exactly, which we is why this really good big monster be... fight. Yeah, so this episode is going to be structured a little differently. We're just going to mainly be talking about different topics versus the actual chronological happenings of this movie. Because we got, we we went for big monster fights, we got big monster fights, and it was an awesome time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it didn't. And I'm so happy because this is like, as a filmmaker, this is bad to say, but I'm so glad that the story just took the back seat on this one. Yeah. And and it was just big monster fight because um the only thing that annoys me about like American like adaptations of like Godzilla and stuff like that is that we I guess every filmmaker in Hollywood just thinks that big human matters instead of Godzilla and I'm like no just give them like 5 minutes and I want them to just deck it out and Godzilla versus Kong this modern one did a lot better with it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I think they they focused on the monsters a lot more yeah like you were saying and i'm glad for that they they gave them actual emotions versus making them the antagonist even though that's essentially what they started out with they're like oh godzilla's attacking for some reason the one thing that bugs me about these new releases is the kind of disjointed consistency i really do wish they had some sort of like connecting storyline if that's what they were going for because they like referenced a lot of things. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um so, you know, spoiler warning, we're going to be talking about obvious outcomes of the movie, what happens, what didn't happen. Uh so just be warned. All right. So so first off, just so we can like get the unimportant human aspect out of the way. Yeah, I was going to say let's just let's start out with the humans I... first. <laughs> As as someone who got their start in podcasting on a joke conspiracy podcast, I I really like that the new character that they brought in uh, is a big old conspiracy theorist on mm-hmm. specifically kaiju related things. Uh, it didn't did it matter? No, not not at all. But it was fun. <laughs> uh, best character next to uh, Julian Dennison. Um, best additions For to sure. the franchise it was so much fun also and- can we talk about the fact that uh this like hyper conspiracy theorist podcaster for specifically kaiju uh is just working at apex like it's nothing that <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny he he just got he just got inside information but like didn't go anywhere with it it was great i love how dramatic they were with that uh flash drive <laughs> they 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 put a little too much emphasis on the importance of that. Um, so essentially, he is working at Apex, but he's like trying to infiltrate them and get information. Um, and he has this really funny scene where he talks about apples with this one tech guy, and like really just annoys him to the point where he's like, "Um, actually, I gotta go to the bathroom. Bye, weird guy." And he's like, <laughs> "Excellent. This my plan is achieved." And he downloads everything onto a flash drive, but uh-oh, something's happening. There is an alarm blaring, and who shows up from underneath the waves but our lizard boy, Godzilla? During, um, yeah, his whole rant, uh, when he's talking about, 
when he's uh, before he downloads the the stuff onto the USB, he talks about like handmade hand sanitizer and this whole this whole shtick that I yeah. swear I it had me dying for ten minutes straight mm-hmm. and I almost like couldn't hear myself and it was no. annoying and it was great. I love everything that Brian Tyree Henry is in, so mm-hmm. I absolutely did love him. And like I did like the human aspects of this. I just did feel like it was a bit disjointed. And I, again, wish that, I mean, while we did have carry on characters from other film franchises or, you know, specifically Godzilla, like Millie Bobby Brown, they just still didn't do much because, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what are you going to do when you're faced with a giant, like 50 story lizard and monkey? (laughs) Yeah, it is better um amongst the rest of this um legendary pictures uh monster verse though i felt um uh, nala have you seen kong skull island yet i haven't and i i, I gotta i've seen parts of it um okay like i've seen you know samuel jackson get smashed sorry spoilers but okay. i worked at a movie theater <laughs> um yeah because like i guess i was in the minority because i'm in a bunch of film groups on facebook because duh <laughs> and I'm like the only one who has Kong Skull Island at his top of the MonsterVerse before Godzilla vs. Kong came out. Mm-hmm. And it was mainly because uh, the human characters in that one were like cartoon characters. And it was great. Uh, <laughs> John Goodman and Samuel L. Jackson have this cartoon rivalry with each other and with Kong himself. There's a stare down from across <laughs> a lake between Sam Jackson and Kong. There's no way Kong could actually like literally see Sam Jackson's eye line, but you feel the intensity. That is so good. Mm-hmm. And, okay, now that makes me want to watch it. No one takes it seriously. Um, uh, And it was like my main problem with the two Godzilla movies. I'm like, they're trying to be like this whole... It's always something eco, and I can never pay attention because I got bored with the two Godzilla movies. Yeah. And it seemed to be a lot better cleaned up in Godzilla versus Kong. It's just the bear like, uh, oh, well, Godzilla doesn't like that you guys are doing this, so he attacked. And then that's it. They didn't, like, beat you over the head with it. And then, you know, big fight. They're just like, they, they finally realize that these are the titans. They are monsters. There is no reasoning with them. Yeah. And there is no fighting them, as we'll see whew, later on in this topic list. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Julian Dennison's character was also hilarious. Uh, I love how in all of his other roles that he's played, he's been a rebel. And here he is in this like giant, crazy monster movie. And he's the little nerd with the glasses and the backpack. He's not even just like a total nerd. He's just the normal teenager of this whole movie. He's like, I'm a bit underqualified for this. <laughs> Absolutely love him. And I I love the the what he brought out in the other two characters. Like I did love the little trio. They were going off on their little like side quest mission. Um I think they were like the through line of the, the whole story. Kind like, of on Godzilla's very, side, at least the very loose, like oh, she kind of met Godzilla once ish. Yeah, Wait. they those two were just totally the well, expo dump for Godzilla side. We and... also do have um, the other character that kind of represents the Godzilla side, kind of, uh, which is Ren Sarazawa, who was the son of the scientist who died in the last movie, Ishiro Sarazawa. Remember the scientist sacrificed himself? Oh, Again, I don't. That's why, yeah, yeah, that's why I was bummed that there isn't. Yeah, but like. <laughs> you, I mean, you gotta, you gotta remember how. Sarazawa is big. The story of these movies has been. <laughs> I just wish Damien Bashir was just more of a cartoon villain. I needed him to rival Sam Jackson. I needed him to stare down <laughs> Monkey or Orla- He could have stared down two monsters, and that didn't happen. <laughs> he totally could have. Well, more on that. Um, yeah, the villain wasn't as uh, as big as he could have been. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, when you're when you're talking about a movie with titans, you do need to have human characters that can at least measure up in like some sort of cheesy way and they they didn't they didn't really go that route with it i think he cleaned it up like in the last couple moments where he's like uh, create like the big reveal of mega godzilla is like and we are the apex predator and i'm like okay 
That that fulfills some part of cartoon villainy for me. Of course, the facility is named Apex. That's what they're trying to do. Apex Predator. Ha ha ha. I, I like it. It it's dorky. It's <laughs> it's enough. I I'm like cool, cool. Now we you're like a complete villain now. I'm you know happy. what? They did mention. Um, you know he he also wears his jacket over his shoulders. That's also pretty cartoonish. Classy. Absolutely classy. You can't be a cartoon villain without some sort of like. Without the drip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta have it. You gotta have that flow. Or else it won't be worth it. that silhouette. If you're. Every every villain needs a good silhouette. And he fulfills it. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I guess that. Well, no, let's let's hop over to the Kong side characters. What did you think of. uh, Yeah. Rebecca Hall. And uh, what? Alexander Skarsgård? Yes. Mm-hmm. They exist. Yeah. yeah. They cool. aggressively exist in this movie. <laughs> Everyone on Godzilla's side. Yes, that is a true fact. Everyone on Godzilla's side is like a fun, quirky, like troop of like a conspiracy guy, podcaster with these teenagers. And then we have the scientist people who science. <laughs> That's all they can do. I did like um, the little girl. She was adorable. Yeah, she was great. Uh, she emotes so much with her eyes. And mm-hmm. honestly, that's all I needed. And I'm like, cool. Little girl played the little girl part really well. Yay. We love to see it. Also, her relationship with Kong. Oh, my heart. Uh, I mean, we'll get to it later when we when we dive into some of the fight scenes. Um, well, actually, this wasn't a fight scene. This was just when they had to take Kong as their guide to Hollow Earth, which we'll talk about in a later topic. Um, but when they're on a boat and Kong is chained up and he's scared and he's, he doesn't know what's happening, she comes to him and she calms him down. And I love that the relationship she has with him is because she's deaf and he, you know, she can't hear him and his roars. Like she can only feel him and is not so scared of him. Yeah. <sighs> Also, a really it. cool thing about the actress who played her, Kaylee Hoddle, is that she's actually deaf. Yes. Oh, that's sweet. I love it. Um, we we love watching Hollywood uh, cast people who fit the role. That, please. It it pays off. Like, it's effective. Mm-hmm. And I like, I love the sound design, how it came, you know, in and out yeah. when it was dealing with her. I thought that was, I, I always love when films do stuff I, like that i really liked what they did specifically with um mecha godzilla um and how it was vaguely kind of reminiscent of a uh, king Ghidorah. um mm-hmm. like when we first had like that eye like turn on you had like that kind of three yeah. pulse out which was kind of the uh, digitalized version of the sound that Ghidorah made um and then when he kind of roars it does the triple scream um Oh yeah, you right, so, you right. So Mecha Godzilla, because you know Ren kind of loses control. I kind of got that that was some Ghidorah being like, "Oh, round two, here we yes, go. Yes, let's go." Or I guess, I guess round it was. It would be. It would have been round. Uh, who knows? A million. There, there are ancient <laughs> monsters. Right. And I do love um. First of all, I think Junky XL score is like really underrated compared to his other stuff. And uh, his score use for Mechagodzilla, you doing a very cool, like, 90s Eurocentric score with Mechagodzilla was so sick. Uh, it's almost cheesy to a point, but I think that's what adds to, like, the whole ambient of this fight and this whole mm-hmm. movie in general. Oh, that whole third act, like, that whole last fight scene was, ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, it sounded amazing. It was so pretty, also. Most oh, importantly, gorgeous. can we talk about... Mid- magic hour in hong kong are you kidding me yeah <laughs> lovely Neon? uh i almost screamed let's go background. yeah no same same i was like look at all these colors let's go like every time they swap i mean we're we're getting into the the battles now because it's just mm-hmm. that good um so we'll, yeah we'll yeah. we'll get we'll get into yeah we'll get into okay. more of that later but I, I think we're done with the characters Junkie XL, well, the newest goat. I love this man. Yeah, I've been a fan of his like since uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, uh, the dude okay. is insane. Yeah, the dude is insane. Um, I even followed some of his stuff on YouTube, and when he did the breakdown for Mad Max, um, the guy the guy knows his stuff. 
um, he was inspired by a lot of desert rock from like the late nineties, early two thousands. Oh, and he's nice. like, Oh, I, I love Queens of the stone age and stuff like that. Got a rig similar to their setup and started playing the guitar parts for uh, Mad Max. And he's been so good ever since um, he's been getting a lot more work. Uh, he did the Deadpool um, score, uh, Batman right. v Superman. All right. Oh. Oh my goodness! I I don't know how I I didn't realize who this was. Is he he did the score for one of the most influential movies that came out yes last year, guys. He he did the score for Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh yes, my god! Yes, he did. That his his magnum opus, I would say. Yeah, the mm-hmm. dude is so cool. Um, uh, the few good things. Um, it's a different topic, <laughs> but but like the few good things I liked about um Zack Snyder's um Justice League was the new and improved score done by junkie xl who was supposed to be the original score composer and honestly the dude has never let me down music wise on anything he's done and God- godzilla versus kong is just another uh, piece of music that oh, i love hey. from this guy heck yeah he did the score for burnout paradise that's a it's a driving game uh that's yeah i was about to say isn't that the video game yeah it's uh it's a really fun game, um, and the sound design in that one is amazing. So cool! The the dude is so cool. Um, I could talk about this guy forever, but then it wouldn't be a Godzilla versus Kong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it looks like we're good on the characters. And uh. okay, so we got to see some really cool, awesome looking locations in this. So we, we just nerded out about uh, the final battle in Hong Kong with all those neon lights and the beautiful, really beautiful. but we also got not the flat earth, but the hollow earth. Boy, boy, boy. Let's go. That wow. was awesome. It was, it, it looked so cool. I, the, the, you know, the physics and the quantumness of it didn't make sense entirely, but whatever, who cares? Nala, it this had is mountains it, in the sky. It was so important for you to watch Kong Skull Island because John Goodman has a whole conspiracy rant in like the first 15 minutes of Skull Island about the hollow earth theory before they even make it to Skull Island. He's Fabulous. Like, there are monsters here. Do you have you heard about Hollow Earth? And he just loses it. And I'm like, this isn't going anywhere. And sure fast enough. forward, fast forward to Godzilla versus Kong. That's a whole subplot. We made it. We made it, everyone. Finally. Oh, beautiful. This is cinema. Yeah. So <laughs> the Hollow Earth is just this beautiful it, it it's basically the earth is hollow that there is uh beautiful it, foliage it, and weird gravity and all and, around and a point um, of, of light that comes from nowhere yeah um it's <laughs> yeah it, <clears throat> uh, and really the explanation for why there's a light and why the gravity it who it doesn't matter you it, know what who cares <laughs> it honestly throw it away we're 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 watching giant monster fight movie. Do you think we care that like the physics of the earth is going to be bad? No, we, we don't. Know. Uh, I don't know. I bought you, it. If you do watch <laughs> that, you you watch the Hollow Earth. Was your belief that, thoroughly suspended? Yeah, and and your thought is, oh, this isn't realistic. <laughs> you have no friends. I hate to tell you this here. Um, it's a giant monkey floating in the hollow center of the earth, and he found his home. You know what? Yeah, none of this is real. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's beautiful to carry Godzilla before we make it to Hollow Earth through helicopter. And we make it to Hollow Earth and he's like, I can fly. It's <laughs> it's better than Henry Cavill's first flight in Man of Steel. It's it's beautiful. Uh-huh. He's, he's like, I am a hoe. <laughs> I loved it. No, I again I I knew not watching Skull Island would come back to haunt me. I did King Kong dirty. Can we also see the, uh, when he's in the hollow earth, he has that whole like uh, God reaching out to Adam painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hand-shaped rock. Because art. I almost cried in the theater. That That was, <laughs> I have never seen anything so beautiful before in my life. I know they made weapons like that's Mm -hmm. but no I'm saying like sharpen like it's it's made from the scale of a Godzilla like 
Totes. It's dope. Mm-hmm. I yeah no I I loved the um I loved I I loved everything about the Hollow Earth. I loved his fight with the I don't know what to call them. They're like almost wyvern skull oh, crawlers. Skull crawlers with the skull crawlers. <laughs> yeah no I I loved the throne room. Um, the amphitheater like steps like it it gave me kind of I don't know like what Sith like vibes. Yeah, like it feels like um, you know, Palpatine's um throne or whatever. Yeah. Or, or um, Andy Serkis has one and uh, mm-hmm. Last Jedi. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I thought it was um, it was cool to see skeletons of you know past Titans that were in there. Um, and I mean specifically the one that he you know Kong wrenches the axe out of you know their skull, and it turns out to be. Something that fits so specifically in place on the floor. And it's a giant. Uh, I love this part of it, too. That's what activates, I guess, the core of the hollow earth energy. And it was um, <laughs> essentially Godzilla, like, wrapped around the throne. Kind of like Norse mythology and the snake that circles the earth. I was just about to say, yeah, that's like um, Kong's Stormbreaker moment. I know like, from a Infinity War. I'm like, definitely. I was so much expecting... great, so much great environmental storytelling in that scene. It's ridiculous that someone wrote this. Yeah, <laughs> there was yeah it 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 was a lot. It was a lot to just I you just let it wash over you. I gotta say, I also I love the fact that um, just kind of with this we. Even though I think, spoiler alert, Kong wasn't the victory monster, uh, I like that he was the protagonist monster, so to speak. Yeah, he was definitely the one that we connected with the most. Like There he, wasn't he had... that much Godzilla story. It was mainly him showing up, wrecking stuff, and leaving. Yeah. Well, Godzilla just has his <laughs> life together, you know? He's a pretty simple guy. You know what? That's, that's fair. <laughs> simple guy with simple Kong. needs. I, I do kind of like that, in a way, Kong became the king of the Hollow Earth and Godzilla became the king of, stayed the king of, I don't know, not, not real Earth, but outside Earth? The flat Earth? What, what is what is outside <laughs> of Hollow? Crust Earth. Yeah. He's God, the king of crust Earth. King. He's the crusty king. Well, <laughs> If he's underwater most of the time, yeah, he's like the crustacean king. <laughs> we need one more movie so we could get to the other half. <laughs> what they sh- I really wish they did. Um, I when Godzilla blew a hole into the center of the earth, I wish that they just did a brief cut scene of like you know the joke of like dig a halfway across the world to China. I just like they just cut to I don't know China or somewhere just like a random day and then. That- Oh, I guess what, yeah, they were. Yeah, it's just like Arizona. It's like Sedona, a random day at Sedona, and then all of a sudden, just like a, a giant beam oh. of there atomic anymore. breath. Oh, oh no! Let's do it, guys. Come on, <laughs> we've made it this far. We could totally do it. If we bullied them into a full S Snyder cut, we can bully them into one five second little cut. So what you're saying is you want Godzilla to make the world a donut? I want Godzilla <gasps> to join the Snyderverse. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I love the I love the state of cinema today. Let's bully multi-billion dollar <laughs> corporations into giving us what we want and it'll work. <laughs> Ooh, yikes. Uh, that man. actually has me a little worried. Yeah. I'm, I'm Let's one- go. I'm glad you <laughs> did that because through Josh Joss Whedon. Um, on the other hand, no, for sure. Uh, what, what, what precedent did we set, guys? It's yikes. Mm. Well, anyway, back to. I personally love cyberbullying people, regardless of where they work. <laughs> Let's talk about you know what we're really here to talk about, which is Kong and Godzilla. Big monster fight. Big monsters. Let's talk about our big monster boys because we love them. Big this monster. is our Kongzilla love hour. All right. So first off. I think highlights my favorite probably moment was uh when Kong stuffed the axe down Godzilla's throat. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I I personally liked it because it was kind of a callback of like that one famous ridiculous <laughs> moment where Kong stuffs a tree down Godzilla's throat. Absolutely. Um, Look at how far we've come. Uh, he I essentially like, did the same beautiful. thing. I'm seeing the chat right now from General, and that is insane. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, the guy in the Godzilla costume is just getting bonked in the head. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Um, How do I look for that job on Indeed? I want to be that guy. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my favorite Kong moment. But again, like you said, Faith, he was the protagonist um, monster. And I just, I loved all the interactions he had. He was very, you know, he had, he was so full of expression. And, you know, I'm I'm really glad he was able to find his home mm -hmm. oh makes me cry also sad kong in the rain is just like beautiful oh, it breaks <laughs> my heart i really want that as just like a gif reaction sad kong um, in the rain i know we're supposed to be talking about fights but another thing <laughs> that i think is so underrated in this movie they didn't have to go this intense but the actual cinematography in working with the vfx artists on how beautiful this whole movie looked mm -hmm. like the rain is gorgeous absolutely no they they killed it with the visual effects and they killed it with the cinematography too mm -hmm. and yeah. the the lighting and the colors uh it's just like absolutely every like Everything that you need to hype up, they totally hyped up. Beautiful. Like, even to the point that the opening credits was just like a... Well, I love the opening credits. I was like, this is giving me, what, like, It gave me a lot of faith like, that this movie knew that it, what it was going to do. That, that it was, we were here to see big monster fight. Yep. Um, Kong scratches his ass in the first five minutes of the movie. <laughs> and yeah, we the knew style. from that moment on. I'm like, that's literally me. <laughs> I've never related to someone more. I mean, like, like uh, him being essentially the protagonist, he, he has an arc. And you see him go and, and process that arc. Um, and you see what he, you know, what he, just like every hero, what they want isn't exactly what they need. And what they eventually end up with in the end. And Kong didn't end up, you know, spoiler, sorry, we already went through this. He doesn't end up beating down and, and, and declaring himself king of the world, but he eventually found his home in the hollow earth. And, and maybe, who me... knows, maybe more people like him. More that people. makes me so sad, though. <laughs> I've spent the, like, months on monkey propaganda. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And, <laughs> and I can't well, even disagree how it happened because, you know, he started off as a badass. Kong bows to no one. Mm -hmm. Then he, he loses that first round to Ka to Godzilla in a very fair fight. It mm -hmm. works out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, he, he had the advantage there on the first on the first fight, Kong gave it everything he had, considering that he was still shackled. Oh, yeah, no. Like, like the first half of it. My boy, like, did really well, considering <laughs> the circumstances. He mm -hmm. wins the second round, and I'm like, I, he could kick Godzilla's ass now. Mm-hmm. Third, <laughs> third round. Third round. Hey, they had to defibrillate him, okay? <laughs> they <But> did. I, <laughs> I was so let down, I'm like, Bro, I had money on you. Yeah. Well, hey, Manuel, <laughs> even though that Kong didn't win Godzilla versus Kong, he did win the much more important battle of our hearts. I'm going to say that he won. My our heart isn't the one out 20 bucks, okay? I am. <laughs> I had full faith that this dude was going to win. I was hoping so much on that axe, deflecting what that like big red Godzilla at the end of King of the Monsters and be like, He'll parry that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, and it does. The The axe does absorb the power because it's made from uh, one of the, the spikes off of a Godzilla, so... But I still saw with my own eyes this dude with tools, monkey brain, like agility, <laughs> and he's still like, he got beat, you know? <laughs> he did. I took a Which huge is... L on this one. <laughs> Again, because we relate a lot to King Kong. So because Kong is the one that we relate to, like you said, in the first five minutes, we're like, yep, that's me. 
Um, it's funny because this is how we would probably hold off against Godzilla as well. So, I mean, he he gave it his best shot, but you are dealing with uh, a giant lizard who can shoot atomic breath 2,000 yeah. miles into the center of the Earth. I don't and know. I, he gave him a fair fight, though. I, they they duked it out for sure. Mm-hmm. And like, I also wouldn't be surprised if this might just be a temporarily stop on this Godzilla Kong arc. Mm-hmm. Um, it would not surprise me if in the future this is kind of Kong's low that he hit, uh, mm-hmm. and eventually maybe in a couple oh, movies I'm, from now I'm he's going to have his chance for redemption, up. and he's going to beat Godzilla, and he will come out as that king. Um, yeah. So there's hope. There's hope for you. But it's, again, it's the friends that they made along the way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that Kong lost. He gained a friend in our lizard boy Godzilla. Which I guess we can transition into what we liked about Godzilla. Even though, you know, he only came in from fight to fight. There wasn't much in terms of, like, Godzilla personally and what he was dealing with. Um, big I boss still, energy. yeah, definitely big boss energy for sure. Um, Bowser vibes, especially when he <laughs> was like laughing at King Kong in the end. He was like, <laughs> I, I like audibly laughed. He has a giant smirk on his face. Um, but I mean, he gets he gets it smacked out of him. Kong does beat him down. That was, uh, I would say, my favorite Godzilla moment. Um, but also anything with atomic breath that is my favorite of his moves. Like, man, God or er, Kong really took our hearts in this film, but uh Godzilla's just so cool. Oh, yes he is. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Every time he was on screen, I was like, This is awesome. But like, he when is they weren't so... fighting, I was rooting for Kong, like, mm-hmm. all the way. <laughs> and then Godzilla would show up, and just everything he does is awesome, and I'd be like, yeah, get the monk! <laughs> I will say he is very, very destructive. And can we be honest? Hong Kong no longer exists in their universe. That <laughs> that was leveled. They leveled it. They can rebuild. <laughs> I mean, how much are LEDs? That, that, that was 90% of Hong Kong. In this you know what? That's very true. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I wanted to bring this up earlier when I don't think Kong totally represents us. I think, unfortunately, Damian Bashir as an Apex company is like what we do because they you they know made a that, mech. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. They made a Pacific Rim mech with Mechagodzilla. Yep. Mechazilla was dope. It, it all went to hell because, you know, it's like, oh, crap, uh, we lost control because plot and <laughs> it destroyed everything. <laughs> Yeah, I I will say when they showed a uh, Ren in that uh, Ghidorah head, just mind controlling the Mega Godzilla, I really just wanted them to start playing the uh, Cruel Angel Thesis. Uh just just for my own nerdy heart. Yeah, they just used it up on they on the last the, movie. Uh, the blue that Blue Oyster Cult song in a good way in a Godzilla movie. Like they had the nah. remix of it in the end credits, but it was a bad remix. When I liked it. They're so tanky and um, Godzilla in slow motion destroying a city to that song. I like that remix. It's Bear, Mc- uh, Bear McCreary with Serge Tankian from System of a Down, and um, Brendan Small <laughs> from Death Clock on guitar. Wow. What do you mean? Which is cool, but Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> I love Blue Oyster Cult. You can't, but you the can't chance at the beginning of the remix cult. is insane. And the percussion is so cool. I would have loved it if they just brought it back for this one. Because I feel like that should be Godzilla's American theme. Even though the Toho score is like very iconic when he's there. Um, this, is, this is Legendary Pictures, Godzilla. Let's, let's throw in the rock and roll. Um... So something that I realized about Mechagodzilla is, or I mean, Mechazilla, I they just call him Mechazilla, um, is why Godzilla went and destroyed all these places that were making, creating Mechazilla was because they were using Ghidorah to control it. And Godzilla is, you know, mortal enemies with Ghidorah. And he's like, I can sense that he's here somewhere. I'm just going to destroy everything. So I thought that was these fights were about was just Godzilla was just getting kind of antsy 
and was like, oh, God, I got to take this energy out on something and just beat yeah. up Kong. It's kind I of like what my cat does to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. I just think it's Kong funny because he's like, <laughs> he, he was. He did get caught in the crossfires uh, of Godzilla just being like, oh, this guy again? How many times do we have to teach her this lesson, old man? But regardless, Mechazilla was awesome. <laughs> Uh, in his own right, he he definitely got the beat down that we all were there to see. We weren't there to see Kong versus Godzilla. Come on. Why can't they be friends? Because that's They boring. teamed up. Well, by the end, when they teamed up against Mechagodzilla. Conflict creates drama, and that and that's why everyone sees movies. Boom. Build School 101. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I did the appreciate. The real reason is that there's just an immense amount of sexual tension between all these. For characters. sure, I'm, I was literally I'm mad going they didn't to make say, out. <laughs> I, you know, as soon as you know when Godzilla was stepping on Kong's chest and they were like yelling at each other, I was like, "Come on, just kiss already." Enemies to lovers. Favorite. We arc. love to see it. I, I absolutely want more Kongzilla team ups because the way they work together to take down Mecha Godzilla, mm, excellent, great teamwork. So I guess we will finish off with just a, a quick recap on all the fights. So Faith, if you'd like to take us through each round. So our first fight is on a boat, y'all. And it is Kong versus Godzilla in the middle of the ocean. What did you guys think of that one? That's so tense. <laughs> he has so God. Um, King Kong has so very little footing. <laughs> He's just hopping from ship to ship, <laughs> just trying to square off. <laughs> I honestly appreciate his his constant effort. He is always ready to throw down. He's like, I don't care if I'm shackled. Let's go. I will. I will scream in your face. I don't care if I'm on another boat. I will scream in your face. I will scream at you underwater. And then he gets humbled by getting his ass beat. Like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> Dude, this isn't your... We're not going to win this fight, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in the towel. But I will say I did hate how they were like, oh, just turn off the ships and pretend to play dead. That'll work. I suppose. I guess I it was to teach Kong to you know, play dead when you're dealing with Godzilla because he will beat you down way more. I was surprised how on board King Kong was with that because, you know, they just, no one like radioed him like, hey, dude, we got to play dead. <laughs> All right. he, he's just like, all the ships turn off and he's just like, yes. He's like, dude, I'm tired. <laughs> um, ugh, I understand. I need a nap. And um, a nap he got because he, uh, you know, he was transported by helicopters <laughs> to his next place. Uh, one thing I also really liked about this um, is that we get just the, it's always classic, it's always satisfying, Godzilla slithering up in the water about to throw down. It is always yes. just such a hype buildup. Um, every time they do it, I I love it. It's I'm, I'm a sucker for that very specific Godzilla moment. No, I, you know... I always love seeing the uh, the scales come up on the water. You know, you know, uh, yeah, it's very Jaws, and you know it's about to get way more intense. I also like the fact that the boat fight for, like, a few seconds was just boxing. <laughs> yeah. My boy had combos. He <laughs> was so good. <laughs> True. Okay. Godzilla Godzilla's power is in his tail and you know his his atomic breath and stuff like that. Whereas ooh, King Kong, yeah, he, he can definitely throw a haymaker. Um he gets immediately that... knocked down right after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't good for any of us. I'm so <sighs> I'm coping. <laughs> um Kong drowning was also a, a very scary moment because you know that's that's the problem with Godzilla and fighting him in water. He is very much in his territory, um, and I'm glad Kong was able to get himself unshackled in time um, to continue to throw down because he spit up the water and then he just got back up again and was I'm like, not gonna "Is lie. that the have best made it. you got?" He shouldn't have made it though. I'm not gonna lie. I was on Team Kong the whole time, but I'm like, "Nah, he should have died." I okay. But again, 
Are, are we really going to question <clears throat> any realism in the, these movies? Yes. Uh. Nah, I'm kidding. Um, I also I love the fact that um, <laughs> I go on faith. Fabulous. Um, I love the fact that physics were just thrown out the window, as were a lot of logical points in this movie. Uh, because should. these helicarriers, they should have absolutely crumbled under the weight of both of these titans. On top, but I guess these boats are made out of super floaty material, so that's cool. If they have the, you know, the budget to make Mecha Godzilla, then I guess yeah. they can reinforce their boats to be. Well, I mean, but Godzilla like like swam through one of them, and like it, it's like the Ant Man argument with with physics because he runs on the gun and he's. Like light as a feather, but when he drop kicks, he's like the weight of an entire man. Just that's just, very true. It's just go with it. Just turn your brain off. This was again, I'm begging you at this point. <laughs> it's kaiju rules, guys. <laughs> I am the screenwriter of Godzilla vs Kong, and I'm begging you to stop <laughs> questioning everything. Like just, <laughs> we're all gonna have a better time for it. Please stop asking questions. <laughs> um, I would also just like to point out that. I, I okay maybe rules function differently. There's a hollow earth, so I guess that's also keeping them up. Who knows? Who cares? Whatever. Um, realistically speaking, though, if I did live in a world of kaiju's, I would be uh, terrified. Oh yeah. Uh, don't don't want to be there. Don't want to be there. I love seeing it. Cool, but don't want to live it. I don't know if I had an Idris Elba guy telling me, and let's. I don't know. Does the Independence Day speech and telling us to go fight monsters? I'm like, yeah, you just Elba, let's go. I can live <laughs> I mean, in that kaiju world. That's fair. If I could, if I could fight the kaiju, sure. But I would hate to be one of the citizens in the many towns that they destroy. I just get insured. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm not. I don't. I don't have good odds against me versus a kaiju. I. I feel that fight would go a very specific way, <laughs> and it is uh, what's his butt's daughter. So we have Godzilla versus Kong in Hong Kong. Um, do you think it was set in Hong Kong specifically for that reason? Yes, it was. It yeah. was for Hong King Kong. That's what they did. Uh, and on top of just being one of the most beautiful settings in the movie, oh my god. Uh, it was a really dope fight. This is where Kong has his brand new weapons upgrade of a Zilla axe. Uh, and it was just really kind of cool seeing Kong be creative in this fight. Um, I, I think that that was my favorite part for me. Uh, is It was big monster fight. But it was also big monster fight where one of them is actually kind of being the brains about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was very much one of those fights where it was like... I'm going to be here and then I'm going to leap and you're going to smash your head into this building. Ha ha. Um, but again, just being just, oh, oh, those poor architects who worked so hard designing these glow stick buildings only to have them be decimated in in record time. God, I'm seeing I actually saw King Kong dropkick Godzilla. That was so badass. <laughs> that, that, that was like my favorite moment of the fight. He actually just dropkicks him. <laughs> And really, it was nice seeing. For. Yeah, it was nice seeing Godzilla get beat down just a teeny bit, especially again, like I said, uh, with that that final whack to the face with that axe. Yeah, that was that was essentially like what, um, like the kryptonite moment, kind of. And you know, you think that might be it for Godzilla, but he comes back again because he senses Ghidorah. You know, the monster's been activated and. Um, that's not gonna fly with him because he is essentially what the the he is the savior. He's the protector of the earth against alien threats. Um, and, and this he takes is his job very seriously. He does. I mean, collateral damage be damned. Uh, and that does he's bring he's a big lizard. Who cares? But before he gets there, he has to eventually beat Kong. Um, I'm so sorry. I am spacing. What was the what was the final blow? It's like a throat punch, wasn't it? Yeah, but how how did King Kong oh, go down? He knocked him down with his tail. Okay, that tail. Ooh. So, so yeah, uh, Godzilla okay. tail whips him, um, and then steps on his chest, and they yell at each other, 
they almost kiss. That's the Superman moment where um, I guess it was the it was the moment that Godzilla realized that you know maybe this guy isn't so bad. Um, I have other things to focus on. I just you know needed to to kind of knock him down a few pegs. But you know he comes to realize that he actually can't really hold his own against Mecha Godzilla, who eventually comes barreling out of the facility uh, to destroy more of Hong Kong. Yeah, that was like. Even I was surprised how bad Mecha Godzilla was going to. Godzilla was gonna die in yeah. that final fight. He really was. And that's when we get the best of. It's such a weird sidetrack because you know God, uh, Mecha Godzilla's on the loose, and so we cut back to Julian Dennison and the conspiracy podcaster. <laughs> trying to hack it. I was. Oh my god! I was thinking about that. I was like, wait, isn't there Mecha Godzilla on the loose right now? While he's monologue? Isn't that what's happening right now? Okay. <laughs> and time so it seems like is of the essence, but never mind. And they're just doing their best, and he's just putting in. <laughs> and the conspiracy podcaster is just like, come on, you keep putting in the wrong passwords. I, I just went to a computer camp over the summer, <laughs> a HTML camp. Did you go to camp in the 90s? And then, you know, they give up after that. Fight, they fight for a bit. And we cut back to just Julian Dennison pouring the whiskey onto the, onto the keyboard. And I, I love how that's it. That's all it took. It wasn't going <laughs> to be though. him, like, really hacking really into the system. Podcast after all of this has happened, that's just, like, titled, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> and none of you jerks believe me. Yes, absolutely. I, I You know, this, this movie did have me excited to see more sequels. Oh, totally. I'd absolutely love to see... One, more of the characters, yes, sure. But um, two, more fights. Because again, I love, I, I did love the defibrillator moment. I thought that was, I was like, yeah, what would restart Godzilla's, or what would restart King Kong's heart? It would be a giant spaceship. I would like to see Julian Dennison come back and just be a normal teenager as usual. And he's just be like, no, once again, I'm very underqualified. Why do I keep coming back? I have no attachment to this. No one here likes me. Um, I barely wanted to be here. I, I don't want to be involved in giant kaijus. I just want, I'm prepping to go to college. I love it. Actually, he's the character we can relate to the most. <laughs> well, you see, the next uh, Godzilla movie is just going to be Hunt for the Wilder People. Um, <laughs> fabulous Godzilla as the father figure of, and with uh, Taika Waititi doing all the mocap uh -huh. um, and the voice of Godzilla obviously I said roar man <laughs> <laughs> well right. um, that brings us to our final fight with uh, where they team up I guess it's like uh, Mecha Godzilla was the doomsday to their Batman versus Superman although we didn't get well, we didn't get our Mothra Wonder Woman, which is always a bummer. Because she's dead. Did she it's die dead. in King of Monsters? She got right. Wrecked. Yeah. That's absolutely... It was, a really, it was a really unfortunate misuse of Mothra, really. <laughs> but yeah, so so we get our final team-up fight. Kong uses his axe. I, <coughs> I thought this was very cool in terms of, like, what it made me remember. This was very reminiscent of, like... Avengers with Tony using his lasers and Cap like reflecting it off his shield. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, good teamwork. We are here for that. Um, I really loved it when uh Kong slammed that dang axe into that stupid robot's head. Mm-hmm. It was so that was his office space moment, you know. <laughs> just playing he's like... gangster rap over it as he's just like beating the hell out of Mecha Godzilla, who's already down. I think it's it's essentially his release of like, hey, this isn't Godzilla, this is the next best thing. So I guess I could take my anger out on this robot. Just as good. I think all the kaijus just need therapy. I, I, I feel they like they're dealing with emotions in toxic ways. Literally toxic, like like nuclear toxic. Isn't that just the solution for every male character in a blockbuster? It's like, just talk your feelings out, man. Wow, absolutely. I don't think we'd have movies if male characters went to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the best take I've ever heard. <laughs> we just wouldn't have movies if male characters went to therapy. The Tell me, I'm wrong. Universe would be a very different place if any of those characters got therapy before Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, so I mean, obviously, it doesn't seem like the end of Ghidorah because the the skull's still there, and Ghidorah is like essentially like based off a of Hydra. No, like they come back. I mean, they really don't have to do a lot of justification to bring any of them back. I feel like they're just honestly. Back. He could just he could just appear with no explanation, and I'd be mm-hmm. I'd be like, yeah, of course. I didn't need to see the scene where they bring him back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is God to your right. Ghidorah writing, okay? just has like a secret planet where he's been cloning himself. <laughs> oh, and... I can't believe Star Wars ripped off the Godzilla movies. <laughs> you know, if they you know if who, they can uh, make... you know who also I could see is the next big kaiju that um they have to fight is possibly Stuart Little. <laughs> I'm logging up. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm gonna start cussing people out, okay? Um <laughs> I, for one, am excited to see more of uh, what they could potentially do if they can if they can make Mecha Godzilla. They can probably make Mecha Ghidorah. Um, you know, wouldn't put it past them. I guess, like, final thoughts, y'all? Like, I'm definitely excited to see more of it. Yeah, as long as it stays fun like it's been with this one and Kong Skull Island, um, I'm fine because it's obviously not the same as, like, Toho's, like, Shin Godzilla. Which I actually had like something to talk about, and it's just like, let's just get an insanely big cast, have some fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll watch thirty of these back to back, no problem. <clears throat> totally, I'm excited for the what kaiju extended universe. Uh, MonsterVerse, honestly, it's just called Monster. Just MonsterVerse. <laughs> well, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the MonsterVerse. Um, I mean, yeah. What about you, Faith? Um, yeah. Uh, it, we got we got visual spectacle awesome big monster fights um the they finally seem to realize that nobody cares about the human story so just <laughs> just make it fun uh and i yeah i think uh other than kong island i think this is my favorite in the monster verse i liked kong i, I liked skull island um i again kind I of in it. the that one also realized that it's a it's a big monkey movie it's, it's they have Black Sabbath have to playing take for some reason. Too, too seriously. Again, this just gives me more of a reason to actually watch Kong Skull Island because I need more of my monkey boy fix. Like the more I tell you about it or anyone else, it's surreal. Black Sabbath plays while they're blowing up parts of Skull Island because they think there's no habitat to it. Like wow. no, it's <laughs> um, secret promo for Kong Skull Island. Watch my boy in action. <laughs> Yeah, that's what Toho did so good. Um, with the serious Godzilla ones, it had commentary he wanted to talk about. With the goofy ones, it was just that, goofy. It was perfect. Got a topic that you guys think that we should look at? Comment on our Facebook page or send us an email at sirensdenpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you to our wonderful guest, Manuel, for being on the show today. It is always a pleasure yeah, thanks talking for having nerd me. with you. Yeah, I, I miss talking nerd with people in person sometimes. So this was good enough. We will definitely have you on for more Kong MonsterVerse related stuff. Mm-hmm. Totes. I'm down. Be sure to catch future and previous episodes on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Thank you to Ty, our producer, and to Sean Thomas at FuzzStudio.com for our theme song. We'll catch you next time. Until then, stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.